What's up, boys? Brick, do me do me one favor. Hold up that glass of wine that you just had. Sweet bear wine. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be a full liability this entire episode. I am high as balls and drunk off of so much wine. And the altitude, obviously. In Rada. We go together very well, I think. Uh, lower your inhibition a little bit. Say stupider things than normal somehow, if you can find a way. Uh, Where there's yeah. a will, there's a way. I think what I wanted to point out, though, is that you don't you do not do one of these little restaurant bitch pours of wine. Like, you... You go for it. Oh, I knew this would be in here for quite some time. So, how many sips have you taken of that, though? Um, this is like my fifth glass of wine. But how many sips of that glass have you taken? Sips, specifically, this clip? Yeah. Um, three. And I would say I don't take sips, I take gulps, obviously, because well, why would you waste your time with sips? That means that would have been poured to the very top. Like, that's that's a little unnecessary. Like, you, know you don't you need to go that much. All right. All right. Judging me, Judgerson. Yeah, you well, can just pour more. Pour wine. another glass. Okay, <laughs> I could not because I was going to come in here, stay in here for the show. Obviously, I had to have enough wine for the entirety of the show, so I don't have to leave and come back. It'd be rude for our listeners, our loyal listeners. Shout out to all y'all to leave and come back. I'll probably well, leave and come back well, later. You're definitely at some point going to get up and walk out of this episode because you do it every week. There's no question. But... It's not like it's a beer or white wine where you want to keep it cold. Like you can just pour as much as you're going to drink all day into a, a bucket and then carry it around with you. Then you never have to refill. I don't see the issue. I'm right with you, actually. So, Mark, you're just a loser dad, bitch boy. <laughs> you got the Rona. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I haven't been able to taste anything in literally six days. Oh, so this wine, this fantastic Italian wine is he uh he shook. shook yeah i contracted dom Toretto's drink of choice there's a sense of burgundy in there it's fantastic sorry <laughs> great are, are you, you're feeling better though mark obviously i'm feeling a lot better i would say i'm 85 percent back mm. that's the worst part of this whole thing is for me the symptom part i had i didn't really have any trouble breathing um i have a, a, a small cough, I would say, but losing my taste was by far the worst. And the fact that this it goes on for like almost two weeks, like I feel okay some days. And then some days I'm just like tired and just want to sleep. And I feel like shit. I mean, some would argue that you never had any taste to begin with, but oh. yeah, I get it. Hey, and Mark, go, go I'm ahead. sorry. Sorry to interrupt you. Actually, let me ask you some of those. Would you trade Calvin Ridley and Raheem Mostert for Ezekiel Elliott? No, fuck no. Smith no. Ass Smithers. Zeke is worthless right now. You think Andy Dalton's coming back after the weekend? After the oh, bye yeah, week? Fix everything. Andy Dalton. Anyways, let's move on. We're not going to do Fantasy Corner this week. I don't week. know. It's not Sunday. We're, we got a lot to get through today. So, um, Mark, I just quickly, since uh, C2, you and I have been going to C2E2 together for about five years. Yeah. Been going a long time before that as well. Uh Thoughts on them moving it to December? I mean, that's, I think it's a smart move looking at what's going on in the world right now. Um, I think if you're going to, if you were to, let's say, have it like mid year, that's still, still walking on thin ice. You're still, yeah, kinda... plus there's a ton of other shit that's getting rescheduled. And yeah, yeah. Um, it sucks. Uh, obviously, like we like to go out there and spend time with people and do shows there and everything. So, uh, people like Mark who get this disease, this virus, and spread it. It's truly just their fault. Yeah. I'm the worst kind of people. Um, does that mean it to be to get the Rona in the first place? Do you think C2E2 then is going to be at the end of February the following year? So it's literally going to be like three, three months. months. They, they've been moving it up steadily for years so i you know who knows i just uh i guess i'm just throwing it out there because i'm not sure everybody even knows if you're in chicago uh obviously you know c2e2 and guess what it's not happening in march it's happening in december of 2021 so we're over a year away from c2e2 shit happens there's a lot of logistics there that they need to plan to make it go well and correctly so probably worth the wait they'll probably make it worth the wait and we're also counting on the fact that things will be normal by then, which who knows? 
We'll see. Who knows? All right. We got a voicemail, and I have not listened to this. Uh, the weird Google translation uh, text to or uh, speech to text is kind of out there. I think I understand it, but uh, let's see what a certain friend of ours has to say. How y'all doing? Y'all know it's Mr. Diggery and Brian. I got a question that's been on my mind for a while, like years. How do y'all feel about spoof movies? Like, I feel like spoof movies was gold, bro. I mean, obviously, you know, I feel like they kind of like declass in quality. Like, I feel like the last good ones was probably like Scary Movie 1 through 3. But then they just got generic. But, you know, just in general, you know, what y'all think of spoof movies? You know, what was y'all favorite ones? I mean, why do y'all think we just don't see as many? So, yep, yeah, look what y'all response is. All right, there's our friend Darian. And uh, I know it was a little quiet on the live stream. I'll tune it up in uh, post. But, his basic question is, how do you guys feel about spoof movies? So specifically, he's calling out like the scary movie movies, one, two, three, probably before they got too bad. Uh, I I know that Darian is a young buck. In the late 90s, early 2000s, we went through like a complete renaissance of spoof movies. Like everything that came out got a spoof movie. They did a Twilight spoof movie. You remember Werewolves Suck? Uh, they did not another Jack team Jack. movie. Not another team movie was great. Chris Evans. Chris so Evans. Good. That was my favorite. That was my favorite. I was going to say that one. It's my favorite from that era. I think, you know, obviously scary movie one. I mean, they made, they made a boatload of money off of that. And the reason why you got so many of these at once, um, is that these shitty little studios would put bare minimum budgets into them. Mm-hmm. But they would still go to the box office, and since it was hot at the time, they could still make bank on it. It's kind of like the Blumhouse business model, right? You very low budget, and you just hope that one hits, and it'll pay for your next thirty. So that's exactly what happened. But back to my point about Darian being younger, I feel like maybe he would have missed some of the older spoof movies because this wasn't a this wasn't a nineteen nineties thing. Uh, so before I get into that, Brick, do you have a favorite spoof? Well, mine was not another teen movie because that when you watch it, it's just so ridiculous and over the top. But spoof is kind of a open genre or not open, but like there's some surprising movies that, you know, I guess are classified as popular spoofs like The Dead Don't Die, Holmes yeah. and Watson's a spoof, Zombieland, um, The Happy Time Murders, they're saying Sausage Party. They said this is the end. This is what I looked up just spoof movies. Um, but it, from what I've seen, it also looked Borat is a spoof mach- mockumentary. So technically Borat, which just came out, is a spoof. Um, but it seems like the the hungover games, what what are these? It seems like maybe the disaster movie. It seems like oh, the, terrible. Yeah, it's it just seems like the Netflix comedies and like the, the original movies before Netflix got like huge it seemed like to take that market, it seemed like. Like midnight movies. Sure. I mean, did you remember they did Meet the Spartans, which was just a ma- like it didn't even follow a certain genre. It was just every popular movie at the time. Like they threw Transformers in there. Uh, obviously, 300 references and shit like that. Like they didn't even stick to anything. They were literally just like, give me your $10. Sit through this for an hour and a half and get the fuck out. We don't ever want you to think about this fucking movie again. Um, but I guess some of the older ones that came to mind immediately, obviously the first one is space balls, which is just mm-hmm. a, a star Wars ripoff or it's a spoof. It's not, I'm not going to call it a ripoff, but um, it's a spoof. yeah. And it's also combing the desert <laughs> was my favorite part of that whole movie. We found shit. <laughs> we ain't found shit. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, this is, this is a, a long time favorite genre of mine because I mean, you think about the movies that I talk about all the time personally, uh, MacGruber is just a MacGruber. Um, Team America, World Police, Tropic Thunder. Technically, Tropic Thunder. I I don't know if that falls into. I guess technically it's that's an action spoof. spoof. Action spoof, but it's 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 original. I'm I'm going back to like older stuff though. I mean like uh, Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles is a spoof on westerns, and you just completely lampoons old timey racism and shit like that. It's it's brilliant. Naked Gun, Leslie Nielsen. Um, undercover brother 
Ooh, uh, yeah, that's kind of like a chef's speech. Yeah, that shows that that movie is underrated. I love that movie. It's so funny. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a ton of really good ones out there. If you haven't ever seen uh, like Hot Shots, Hot Shots is is very much in the same vein of scary movie, but it's in the late 80s. It was basically like uh, Top Gun, you know, the commando type movies. It's Charlie mm-hmm. Sheen, Ryan Stiles from Whose Line Is It Anyways? Uh, and a, a few other just like completely under the radar actors at the time. I think those movies are hilarious. There's Hot Shots and Heart, Hot Shots Part Do, which was the sequel. But Mark, you got a favorite? Yeah, I think <clears throat> I think I would have to go with... Uh... You have to like say the godfather of sat- satirical movies, Blazing Saddles. But from, I mean, my generation, you'd have to say Scary Movie with the the Wayne Brothers. And then uh, Regina Hall was always great in those. But Scary Movie 2, especially because now that I'm... Take uh, my strong hand. Dude, now I'm watching uh, Shit's Creek with Chris Elliott. And him in Scary Movie 2 fucking stirring the mash with that hand. My straw hand. Holy shit. Oh, my straw hand. Throws it in. He's going to die, like falling off the edge. Here, take my strong hand. <laughs> you, uh, Mark, you called it the godfather of, of spoof movies. And that made me think of a mafia spoof movie, which is just mafia, exclamation point, starring Jay Moore. Christina Applegate was in it. It's actually a really low-key funny movie. So, if you haven't seen that, check it out. It came out in 1998. Um, Don't be a menace. I talk about that all the time. That's a spoof of like Boys in the Hood. There are so many good ones out there, and I, I I'm, I'm aiming this at Darian because like we, we know Darian, so I, I feel like as a younger, younger guy, he hasn't seen a lot of these old school ones that pave the way for stuff like Scary yeah. Movie. So you got to check them out. Airplane. Yeah, I mean, Airplane is it. You said the godfather and i mean to me that's airplane airplane is like the perfect comedy movie yeah (laughs) just because it's completely it's non-stop slapstick there's no dull moments at all even when they're pushing the plot on you there's just nothing it's always a joke um great question darian yeah i love it Uh, so thank you and if if you guys have questions for us you can call and leave a voicemail at 847-920-6107 we'll do our best to get to all of them uh and we appreciate you listening team america world police i I don't know what is that a spoof of um it's just in the action spoofs under this that just says i put movie spoofs into google Action spoofs. Number two is Team America World Police. It's a spoof Probably of from- Matt Damon. <laughs> Matt Damon. Fair enough. Just cheesy America action spoof. Austin Powers. Some James Bond spoof. Huge spoof. Austin Powers is the best trilogy of all time. I didn't even think of that. I, mm, I best know. trilogy of all time. Add us. Add us the best trilogy of all time. At Brick. Add no, us. I'm At not going to say no, I'm not going to say that Austin Powers is the best trilogy of all time. I got a better uh, one. I was actually media, thinking about say this a better today. one. Yeah, Mark, let's what, hear it. What is the best third movie of a trilogy of all time? I I would have to go with Home Alone. Home Alone three was great. Get the fuck out of here! Dude, I swear it's good. <laughs> what about the original Star Wars trilogy? That's probably. Lame, what? you're such a dork. Placating <laughs> to the most nerdy crowd of all time. What a loser. Dork ass loser. That was I a lame that. answer. You guys don't like Star Wars, but I do. So, also, Thor Ragnarok yeah. was the third movie in the Thor trilogy. So, that's, that's my a answer. great answer. That's a good answer. People right, so we'll forget that. that Scarlett Johansson was in Home Alone 3. Yo, Back to the Future Three. Just kidding. That's easy. <laughs> like the worst of all time. Terrible. <laughs> it's, it, that's that's the funny thing about that is that it's the worst of the Back to the Future movies, but it's still better than most movies. What about this worst third movie of a trilogy? Hmm. Um, we got the Hobbit. Something that just completely fell off the. We mountain. got Pirates of the Caribbean. We got Spider Man Three with Venom. We got Matrix Spider-Man Revolutions. 3. It's ooh. We got. Planet of the Apes, where War of the wo- Nothing. Remember that movie? Pfft. No Dr. bar. Dr. Off Poda, nothing. yeah. Uh, yeah. You're gonna, actually going to go with uh, The Matrix. The Godfather. 
At eh, that wasn't. It was bad, but it wasn't like the Dark Knight. Uh, I'm just saying trilogies now at this point. Mad Max. I didn't even see that trilogy. Peace. You are, and you're just talking. So why don't you just uh, hang on a second? <laughs> Mark, worst trilogy, worst third movie in a trilogy. Go. Um, probably mu- the Mummy Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. Which one that- was Scorpion King, or was that just the the absolute spinoff? I think Scorpion King was like the fourth or fifth movie. I don't remember any of these. No, it was like the second or th- it was like the second of the trilogy. We don't know. Or Taken we Three. Taken Three was pretty fucking terrible. Like, dude, you did start. it already twice. You can't just keep doing this. Hey, let me ask you this: Why do I know all the license plates when I walk past fifteen cars? What up, Born not. Ultimatum? Born Ultimatum was, was actually amazing. a really good movie. I know it was brilliant. It was fantastic. What What's the one with uh, Jeremy Renner? The bad one is that what they call it? <laughs> the bad one. <laughs> I think that's what the name of it was. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> uh, okay, let's move on a little bit. Um, we how did we even get this question for last week? We posted a dumb question on the Instagram. That was me. I'm a traitor. Was it? No, I don't think you. No, you came to this. Yeah, I said I wouldn't. We were talking about Matthew McConaughey, and I and I was like, I would want him to meet. An alien, I would want him to be presented to aliens. He'd be our guy. Yep, you're right. I uh, need to give you credit for that. Good call. Uh, so the question was, if aliens showed up on planet Earth tomorrow, what character from a movie or TV show would you want to be your emissary? Who's going to go greet them? Who's going to make it so that they don't just blow up Earth on the spot? So okay. we got to get some submissions here. Uh Daryl from Watch It Like, a good friend of ours, says Russell Cass. And that's not who I would have picked from that movie. If you don't know Russell Cass, he is um, the crazy pilot from Independence Day. Yeah. You don't need somebody on edge greeting the fucking aliens. Yeah, he already thinks everything is a conspiracy. So he's going to show up and be like, you're just government lizard people. MAGA, because that's probably what he would say. But... um, yeah, that's I, I probably would have picked. I mean, Will Smith would just punch somebody and say, Welcome to Earth. So that's probably not the best one. But uh, the, I mean, the president in that movie gave a pretty good speech. Mark, you asked me before we started recording, are we just assuming that they can understand English? I think I think you have to, because I think the whole point of this is to uh, I mean, what what direction are you going to go? Are you going to welcome them and kind of talk them out of fucking blowing up our planet? Or, or do you send Dom Toretto to you attack him? <laughs> yeah, you just have to intimidate him. So you send Dom Toretto with his deep ass voice. He pulls up in a 1978 Dodge Charger and 68 and 72. I don't, I don't remember now. He shows up, jacked as fuck, presumably just roided out of his mind. Super deep voice, Corona in one hand, and he negotiates with the aliens. Zap dead immediately. This guy pulls up in what a Camaro 84 dumb car. Here's our spaceship. We just traveled planets. Fuck off, Dom bitch. All right, then he pulls up in the nuclear sub from fast eight. He doesn't get it. No, nuclear sub is nothing, too. Doesn't doesn't do shit to the spaceship that just traveled space and time. Zero zilch down. All right, smart ass. What do you got? Michael Jordan from Space Jam. Look how he dealt with those fucking dumbass aliens with all the superstars content or with uh, all the superstars abilities just mj stretched on stretch armstrong them also if you get competitive you know you're gonna lose because he'll just take that personally i think elise has a beat coming from space jam she's saying bugs bunny he recruited michael jordan specifically to help because he couldn't handle it okay but long before michael jordan was talking to aliens you had him whooping the shit out of Marvin the Martian. It's very true. He's got a lot of he's got a lot of experience with the aliens. Fair. He's a goof. He's a goofster, but can he take over when needs when he needs to? No, that's MJ. That's MJ territory. I don't know. Plus, MJ is not invincible, whereas Bugs Bunny is clearly invincible. In Looney Town, that's all the specific rules to the Looney Tunes universe. Obviously they explain that in space jam. Duh. You know what I appreciate? 
you being utterly fucked up right now is that you say everything with so much confidence. Sweet bear wine. <laughs> oh my god, that's like half gone already. Jeez. Okay. All right. <laughs> let's let's talk about some of the answers we actually got on Instagram. I'm I'm going the the less intimidating route here. So, guy at the movies says Brick Tamland. I think that's a great answer. You know, maybe less intimidating, partially stupid, or really stupid is a better way to go about it. We have uh, Amy Adams' right. character from say, Arrival. They would assume that they could take over our planet. But then Brick would like kill them with a trident because he's an insane person. And also exactly. just Brick killed a guy. You can actually I throw saw that. <laughs> yeah. He's Amy he's Adams answer. from Arrival. Doesn't she like just seduce the shadowy fucking alien figures? Like she, she goes into the mist and just like touches and caresses one of them. I will the never movie. understand why everyone loved that movie so much. I thought it was bad and boring. I like, felt ooh, a movie about linguistics. Cool. Yeah, hard pass. Linguistics. I thought that was. I thought that was a fucking pasta halfway through the movie. Say linguistics, Mark. Linguistics. I can't even fucking <laughs> say it. Say apocalyptic. You nailed it. Linguistics. Apocalyptic linguistics. <laughs> I oh, can't almost, almost botched right. it. Loser. Uh, dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about? Um, well, I mean, we could stay with the Brick Tamlin thing. Uh, I I dream of click data, says Ron Burgundy. I feel like if he didn't have a teleprompter in front of him, we'd be fucked. I, if Brick was there, they'd probably realize how dumb he was and at least say, like, the aliens would take pity on us, say, like, oh, they sent their best and brightest out here, and this is what they got. No wonder they can't travel through space-time. Yeah. Maybe do that's you see that, that's do, idea. Do you, do you see that? That's the, the Eiffel Tower. So... Basically, that we're the best, Ron Ron Burgundy. I, did I do Ron Burgundy, or do I do somebody else? That was Donald Trump. I did Donald Trump as Ron. It meant to do Ron. I, Burgundy. I don't know where you were going with that. But. Oh, it was so bad. It was so bad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Whammy. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There's the other guy. We got we got L Woods as an answer. I think that's pretty good. Mm. Me myself, I would go with. Uh, I would go with Fletcher Reed from Liar Liar because he can just talk his way out of a fucking paper bag and everyone believes what he's saying. Yeah, but he has to tell the truth. So the truth. No, he doesn't. That's just a plot. That's just part of the plot in the movie. I'm going with the line. You're you're saying Fletcher, Fletcher after he breaks the curse. Yes. Or no, before he's saying the before, curse. Where he's a run. scum. He's a scumbag, though. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't um, think that he'd be interested in the, the future of humankind at that point. He would just be out for his own self-interests. That's just something ugly people say. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, this is a throwback to the question that we talked about earlier on the voicemail. Uh, Joel, I'm not going to read his long-ass Instagram name, says Dark Helmet, which is Rick Moranis in Baseball. uh, Spaceballs. He has experience talking to aliens, presumably, right? His big ass helmet cracks my ass up so much. He <laughs> is amazing. That There's movie, just yeah. slapstick in that. Uh, last I checked, it was on Netflix. If you haven't seen that, you absolutely should. So, Mark, what else you got? Uh, I just want to point out that I'm a I'm getting ab absolutely destroyed in the chat right now. Everyone's making fun of the bags I had under my eyes last week. Which hey, is sorry, he's a dad that has to take care of his newborn. You know. And has and a had, virus, and I had and COVID. Had, literally, had COVID. He almost died as a father and took care of his children. Maybe he didn't even know. He literally, was going through the worst oh part God. of COVID during that episode. Like, he's on the, like he's rebounding. Can you give him a break, peanut butter? How about a little bit of jelly, cheese? He's talking into a mic through a ventilator right now. Thanks, thanks, everybody. Wow, thanks. some thanks. people, some people. <laughs> Uh, Mark, I want to go back. L, you you said L Woods. I don't think everybody knows who L Woods is. Uh, that is Reese Witherspoon from. Everyone Legal knows who that is, dude. Legally Blonde. Everyone knows who that is. You idiot. Rick, you're turning as red as your fucking Merlot. I am getting redder, dude. That's the high blood pressure. How long is it going to take for us to kick him out of this chat? Holy fuck! Oh, okay. Uh, Dan Cody podcast says I send the son of Odin Thor, and. Brick, you refuted this. Isn't he technically an alien? He is an alien, but he did say that he's not an alien on Has Asgard, right? So 
I was like, that's yeah, fine. <laughs> I would let Thor be representative. Would you not let Thor be representative of, of Earth? Are we talking Chris Ab- or Chris Hemsworth Thor or? That's what I'm picturing. Yeah. He just show up in a cutoff and just biceps. Wait, is it drunk Thor from <laughs> Avengers? It has to be drunk yeah. Thor. It has to be drunk okay. Thor. I would drunk, go drunk but Thor. also fat drunk, not like first. Oh, yeah. Episode. Obviously, Fat, drunk, best Thor. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's. I think he's the winner. He's fair game, obviously. Okay. Mark, anything else you want to throw out there? Are we good. We're good. If you listeners have any uh, ideas for a question next week, let us know. Join our Discord, by the way, if you're not in there. It's Discord.com. Discord. Discord. <laughs> Literally, Discord.com, and you'll be right in our chat. <laughs> Hit us up on Instagram or Twitter. And we'll send you a link to join the Discord. Oh. God, you guys, you guys feed off of each other. Like Mark's not even hammered or or stoned, and he's just poking the bear that is brick. I'm on the COVID men right now, dude. I'm coming off a of COVID. Yeah, Smithers, you're the only one in your right mindset, you dumb idiot. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm drinking beer. That is drop your mindset. Link. If you're sober, then you're not in your right mindset, obviously. I will drop the Discord link. Sure. Doing it right, right now. Um, while you're doing that, Mark, do have either of you kept up with Big Mouth on Netflix? No, no. Nope. I've never even started. The and cast just, no. makes me want to. The cast alone makes me want to go in, but I just couldn't get... I watched like an episode, half-ass watched it. Well, that, it. The thing, though, is you don't have to pay super close attention. You you can still pick up dumb, filthy jokes as you go. It's not like it, it is a serial plot. Like it it what happens in one episode will affect the next, but it's still like it's not serious. So you don't really have to pay super close attention to it. So, so I, so I, think since I haven't seen people. it since I haven't seen it. Give me a a watch it like shout out to watch it like go listen to their podcast. They're great. Give me a watch it like of two animated shows. I want to know what it actually feels like. Uh, does do they both have to be animated? No. I'm gonna go with South Park meets Glee. Glee, like the high because school. A lot of songs that are very dirty. Um, so I, I I had to throw a musical aspect in there. Okay. I, I respect I, that because that is a big factor into. A show. If there's a lot of musical action, who knows? That's a, a big turn on, turn off. Who knows? I I feel as though that is something that's really hard to pull off. So when you see something like The Simpsons or Bob Bob's Burgers that do like a a fully produced musical number, I find that to be really impressive. Family Guy's really good at it. Obviously, uh, uh, Seth MacFarlane is is very musically inclined. So stuff like that's really impressive to me. Give me give me a percentage of music that's in that show. How many, how many won an episode? Cause I mean, it's pretty sporadic through family guy. And I mean, family guy is more prevalent, but like the Simpsons, I don't think there's as many, there's some, but there's not like ever, there's like every 10 episodes, right? Yeah. I, I would say honestly, guy, maybe, probably, probably every other episode there's, there's some kind of song. And what family, what would you rate family guy? Every third episode, every fifth episode. I don't, I don't fucking know, man. There's music. Just watch it. Watch it or don't. I don't care. This is a I'm new out. season of Big Mouth. You didn't sell so happy I tuned out of that me. conversation right there. <laughs> Anyways, this is season four coming December 4th. They're adding to this already star-studded cast. Zach Galifianakis, John Oliver, Seth Rogen, and uh, I, I might butcher this. I'm going to do my best. Ayo Edabiri. Uh, is replacing Jenny Slate as one of the characters. So if, if you guys remember, uh, there was some uh, outcry over, I guess, a white person uh, voicing a a black character. So Jenny Slate has stepped out of that role and is now being replaced. Um, Damn, Jenny Slate's a great voice overall. She's the op. She's the uh, the sister to our John Ralphio. You're the worst. She does a ton of voice acting too. So she she's got really the- good. She's got a wonky voice, which is great. Which is great for and voice she's hilarious. Very Perfect funny. Timing. Yeah. Very I was funny. broken when she and Chris Evans broke up because they would have made perfect babies. They dated? They I am did. alone. I know. And now you can be sad about it because they broke up. Let's move on. Uh, line going, I'm this. Look, Melissa McCarthy is still fat and falling down in another movie. Um she actually looks pretty good. I think she lost some weight. Yeah, okay. You I'm, want to I'm talk not about joking that? about that either. 
I'm um, not saying that you are. Yeah, but I get it. The she's doing her typical. Well, is she staying in her lane? I don't know. Uh, probably not. Because she keeps doing the movies she's always done. So do we, yeah, do like we think she should of, stay in her lane or? So it, whatever the, she wants. What talking about is super intelligence. It's coming to HBO Max, I believe, in January. Uh, essentially, a an artificial intelligence that's like super advanced downloads itself into her computer and analyzes her and takes what she likes. And it's basically trying to decide based on the the average human being whether or not the human race deserves to be saved or annihilated. Played so by guy, James Camp, James Corden, right? Corden, yes. Timothy Chalifant, yes. Um, so he's he's kind of just watching everything that she does, and I don't know. This looks okay. I'm biased against Melissa McCarthy. I just don't think that she's funny. She, she tries to do the uh, Pratt Falls and stuff, and I just I don't I don't think it's funny. I am pro sam richardson though he is hilarious he is the guy from detroiters shout out detroiters one of the best shows that got canceled after two seasons dumbest thing ever um he was also in mike and dave need wedding dates he was like the husband in that movie if you guys can recall that one he's <laughs> hilarious he's done a ton of stuff oh he's hilarious he's amazing i if there's a lot of him in this movie it'll be good i'll say that but okay. i don't know I, Mark, you you seem like you're not quite as uh, cold on Melissa McCarthy. What are you thinking about this? He's no, I mean she's been in terrible movies. Like Happy Time Murders was a terrible movie. I um, hated that movie. I don't know. I'm I'm just she's okay. She's fine, I guess. She wasn't like the worst part. That just that movie overall sucked. It's not like she made it worse. Um, but I don't know. I just don't really have interest in the movies she does because I feel like they're all the same thing. You know, that's what I get mad about is that every movie that she does is the same thing. And she tried to do that Hell's Kitchen movie where basically she was a mob boss type person. She was with Elizabeth. Uh, I'm blanking on her name now. Moss. But um, yes, Elizabeth Moss. Thank you. Uh, and tried to be super serious and shit. And it just completely bombed at the box office. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it, so I can't say that it was bad, but I didn't hear good things. So, yeah. All right, on to the trailer of the week, in my opinion. Brick, did you watch the trailer for Cyst? Yes, I did. How excited are you to review this movie? Um, full hardest pass of all time. Go ahead. You can take it from here. Give us a synopsis. I mean, it seems, I mean, I mean uh, uh, okay, a scientist is trying to do something in a lab and instead creates a giant monster that is made of cysts and goes around eating people. Gross. Gross. It's not, it's not like that though. Like it's a comedy. It's a schlocky comedy horror movie and it sounds, looks awesome. I really thought that you guys would be more into this. This was like a movie that you see at literal one, that like 1 a.m. And you're like, I'm going to go to sleep in four minutes. That's what that movie looked like. See, I think that you're going to watch this and you're not going to be able to sleep for months because it's going to be so terrifying. You should I, watch I, it then. I don't think I can do it. This could be one of our, like, next time we make a bet on something, this could be the payoff. No, you should just you should just watch it. You're super into it. You seem super excited about it. You should just watch it and give us a great review. Let's hear it. I'll watch it. What do I care? <laughs> Let's hear it. Yeah. When you, when you do, you'll do a nice little review for us. I'm going to be begging for shitty movies to watch really soon. I can't wait for the cyst review. It's going to be brilliant. Just because of people like Mark who can't stay home and keep getting sick. No, it's just like this is the, I can watch the most gruesome, gory, fucking outlandish movie ever. But anything with like popping a pocket of tissue that's pus like shit like that. I can't do it. Look at look at Brick. He's about to puke right now. Yeah, it's fucking gross, and that's I'm over it. <laughs> Neither of you watches like popping videos ever. No, I don't watch no. the Doctor Pimple Popper. Hell I'll no. Watch the TV show, but if I if I'm scrolling oh. through Reddit or Twitter or something and I see one, I, I can't look away. Oh my god! Can I read the definition of assist real quick? Why would you well, want to do please, that? Please it's do. A sack, it's a sack like pocket of membranous. Is that the word? Membranous yeah. tissue. Yeah. 
that okay. c- contains fluid, air, or other substances. Oh, substances. Oh, God. I don't. I don't see the problem. I'll watch it. I don't care. All right. I'll watch can't, wait, it. can't wait. Can't wait for the review. Can't wait for the review. I'm sure. I'm sure you just can't wait. You'll definitely pay attention the entire time that I'm talking. Well, that's what I do every week, day, every day. Should this be a bad movie bet? Should we bring it back you for our Patreon? Do you even listen you to know the questions that we have? Mark, that's a pretty good idea. Thank you. <laughs> I think, I think I that's a pretty it. good idea. I, I appreciate it. You know what, Brick? Idea. I appreciate you tonight. I do. Oh, you're the man. You're the man. We're the man. Smithers. We're man. the man. <laughs> but no, no, no. Also, we it's not a bet because Smithers has to watch it already. He already raised his I, hand, volunteered. Yeah. He Manchurian candidate it. I'll watch this list. It looks amazing. You don't get to fucking tell me what to do, you piece of shit. You told yourself what to do, you idiot. All right, let's move on. Uh, is anybody else pumped for a second season of Space Force on Netflix? Or is it just me? I could get behind it. It's Steve Carell being a little goofy. I, I like him. He's John Mal- being goofy. John Mal- John Mal- Mal- That's what's up. Mark, what do you think? I thought it was okay. I'm just not like... I don't think I liked it as much as you, Smithers. It was fo- it was fine. I enjoyed it because it was something that I could sit down. It wasn't super intense. Uh, I have questions uh, after what the end of season one was. I also still really want to know why Lisa Kudrow is in jail. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. I, I Why not? I think they have a good chance to build on the characters that they built. It wasn't like a yeah. spectacular grab-me-in show, but... I liked where they ended it. Smithers, good point there. I guess yeah. I give you credit there. A good call. In other they, uh, Netflix renewal news, sorry, Mark, you, you want you want to say something? No, I'm just saying you're right. They left it really open ended. I forgot about the ending of it, and then yeah, there was a lot of those relationships that were developing too. So yeah, I guess I, I'm not surprised they're doing a season two. I just didn't think it was the funniest yeah. thing, and I thought it was going to be hilarious initially. But did we all give it a see it? We should do a little history. Do on our throwback Thursday, bring it back and see if it comes back. I did. I, I'm pretty sure, but uh, I'll I'm to see it for too. a second season of this. Um, the, the other thing is uh, Netflix has also renewed Umbrella Academy for season three. I, I don't res- necessarily think that's surprising based on how much everybody seems to have liked season two. I know that I loved it. Brick, you liked it. Yes. Mark, I don't know what you thought about it. It was better than season one, I thought. I thought it was really good. It definitely was, yes. Uh, I'm I'm definitely here for it. Give me more Umbrella Academy. Isn't there a spinoff for that, or did I make did we make that up? You are making that up. Don't say we. We we we, <laughs> did we all just make it up collectively. Do at the chunk. You got a mouse in your pocket, motherfucker. Get out of hey, here. We dished it. We dished it. We came up with it. Maybe I don't know. Go back and listen to another episode. Plug for an episode. Sick. I'm the best. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. You know what would be a great idea. Um. For our movie bets, what if one of us had to watch Cyst? Kill. I think we should watch it for the Patreon members, right? Watch for the Patreon members. Mark, if you want to watch it, you guys can both give a nice review. I'll pass on the week. You're such a little bitch. All right. Uh, John John M. Chu, as Brick hits the bowl. (laughs) Gesundheit. Gesundheit. It's just a regno people of crazy rich Asians. Can we smoke pot on Twitch? Are we going to get kicked off for that? No, I mean, it's a regno right. with, with a little bit of salvia sprinkled over it from 2009. Brick saves yeah. his salvia. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When I went to Amsterdam that one time after visiting Italy, <laughs> we tripping balls in about three minutes. All right. John M. Chu, the direct, the guy who directed crazy rich Asians is in talks direct the live action remake of Lilo and Stitch. Why do we need a live action Lilo and Stitch? Because every other Disney movie that's live action has been spectacular, obviously. Duh. Yeah, just like The Lion King was great. The voice acting was so good. The chemistry between Donald Glover and Beyonce Knowles was unfathomable. You could almost not tell that they weren't even in the same room as they were recording <laughs> their voices. Almost. Almost. Yeah. Beyonce is one of the worst voice actors of all time. Just want to put that out there. But as Foxy Cleopatra, she served as one of the greatest characters in the greatest trilogy of all time. Right, Brick? Fact. Fact. That's a whole lot of woman. 
<laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, I was reading through this article and some for some reason it linked to what Chris Columbus had to say about these remakes. So if you don't know Chris Columbus, he's the I mean, guy from who... America, obviously. Oh, uh, shut it's up. I heard maker. Yeah. <laughs> obviously. We just for we just got canceled because of Brick. <laughs> Whoopsie. I told you first thing in the episode. I'm gonna be a liability. No it's history proven. guy. It's proven. Brick. Today. Can, you interrupt everything? Can you at least be funny? No. Okay. It can either disrupt and not be funny or not be funny and disrupt. That's the anyway, options you got. Columbus is the guy who directed the Home Alone movies. So, Mark, I know he's got a special place in your heart. He came out hard against not only these reboots, but also the reboot of Home Alone. He's basically saying it's a waste of time as far as I'm concerned. What's the point? I'm a firm believer that you don't remake films that have had the longevity of Home Alone. A little bit conceited, but that's okay. <laughs> You're not going to create lightning in a bottle again. It's like doing paint by numbers version of Disney animated films, a live action version of that. What's the point? It's been done. Do your own thing. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Wait, he he's saying there shouldn't have been a reboot to Home Alone. Didn't he do Home Alone 2? They're they're rebooting Home Alone again. Oh. That wasn't a reboot. That was a sequel. Was now they're going to okay. reboot Home Alone and he Sorry. doesn't he's not involved and he doesn't want it to happen. Was he okay with the trilogy? The third Home Alone. That's all that matters to me. I love the third Home Alone. Scarlett Johansson is great in that. Was he okay with it? You're going to have to go ahead and Google it and see if he directed it. I, I couldn't tell you. I don't think That's he directed it, but was he okay with it? I hope so. You'll have to call and ask him. Okay. I think he was because it's reboots, not trilogies either. So I think that still plays in your sequel to trilogy. The trequel. Trequel, definitely a trequel. <laughs> trequel. Speaking of unnecessary reboots, uh, are either of you, Mark? I know you're not because it's a it's a Batman spoof, actually. But Darkwing Duck, either of you? Fuck that show. Love Darkwing Duck. Darkwing Duck rips. He's the man. Also, great <laughs> intros, intro music for Darkwing Duck. It's I'd have to go back and I'd have to go back and refresh. I think do you have a do you have a Darkwing intro drop right here? No. Edit it in. Wow. Okay. We need to get a better editor. Can you believe this guy, Mark? Unbelievable. We don't have an editor. You're the guy. You got to do it. <laughs> God You're damn. You're the guy. It's real soon. Uh, yeah, he's the superior Batman, in my opinion. Um, you know what? There was something else, too. Uh, do, do you remember the uh, the like robotic duck in that show? Gizmo Duck? I do. Gizmo Duck cosplay that I saw this week. Try and pull it up right now and on the go. I think Darkwing Duck is more of like a, a Zorro spoof, not a Batman spoof. The way he's dressed, Zorro. Yeah, Look he's got like here. that that big cap and. Technically, he does right. look closer to Zorro than he does Batman, but the wing, I feel like, and the cape. Well, does Zorro have a cape? Probably. Check this shit out. This is a cosplay for Gizmo Duck. He's on one of those like a uh, hoverboard type things, just scooting through the city. Okay, that is actually so amazing. That's a great yeah, costume. Throw on him. Would I'm you? Be, I don't think I would be able to recognize that if you didn't like point that out to me. I wouldn't be able to recognize that right away. But the duck is the bill itself makes that costume perfect. The the bill. I think I agree with that. How cool do you think that guy feels right there? How Dude. cool do you think he feels? That guy's actually Probably. invincible. He's invincible. He could. I appreciate the pointing at the camera every chance he gets. He's like, yeah, I'm fucking doing it. You would be doing the exact same thing. This is me now. Robotical <laughs> duck. Whatever his name is. That's what he identifies as, as the robot duck. The only thing I wanted to mention about Darkwing Duck is that it's going to be produced by Seth Rogen. So not directed, not cast or anything like that, but uh, he's he's involved He's involved in a lot of stuff like this right now, so I'll give it a shot. Now I'm even more into Darkwing Duck. Let's go. Was, now let me ask you this. Darkwing Duck or Spider-Man? Because we had the Batman Spider-Man. Darkwing Duck is the superior Batman, as you said. Darkwing Duck or Spider-Man? Spider-Man. No? Okay. I think I go Darkwing Duck. I still watch the, the cartoons that they put out now. They're amazing. I throw them on and my kid like watches them on TV, even though he has no idea what's going on. I'm like, fuck, that's a great cartoon. Dark. What what's the most recent one that you watched that's like a great cartoon that you are happy you watched with your son? Just curious. 
uh well i've been watching uh amazing spider it's on disney plus one of the, the new Earth. spider-man series Ooh, okay i could get behind that new spider-man great. yeah did you play Anything the game yet I've, I've been playing the shit out of the game i probably put 10 hours into it already what makes it better than the original or not give me a little quick review i need to see if i need to buy a playstation it's not better than the original <clears throat> it's still great you can tell that they only spent two years on it, but that's fine because they already had the entire landscape set up. It's New York City. That hasn't changed. A lot of the mechanics are the same. My main complaint about Miles Morales, as opposed to the original Spider-Man game on PS4, is that they don't have the rogues gallery, Mark, mm. uh, of the original Spider-Man. It's just kind of like nameless, faceless villains. There's a few that are mentioned loosely. Uh, you get Rhino in the very beginning, Tinkerer is the main villain in this, and I'm pretty sure that most people have never heard of Tinkerer, which is fine. You don't have to have heard of it. Um, But I I would love to see more of his actual comic book villains than just faceless, nameless drones that you just beat up for eternity. Uh, That's always a problem. Mm. So that's the difference in why it's only $50 and not like considered a full-length game. It's like a, what, two-thirds, but mainly... They cut out the the side plots, but just mainly so, focus on the narrow story. They, the, I mean, they haven't cut out the side missions and shit. It's just I, I don't know how long it is because I haven't finished it yet. Okay, so I don't know. Let's move on with more news, though. We are going to see Star Lord in Thor: Love and Thunder. I think that's a good thing that they're continuing to kind of cross pollinate these series without the overarching Avengers type shit going on. I do think it's kind of interesting because everybody's kind of been mad at Chris Pratt lately for no apparent reason. Like uh, basically people just accusing him of like being a Republican, which maybe is, I don't know who gives a shit. Uh, But your political views, if you're not a dick about it, probably shouldn't preclude you from being an actor. Right. All all I know is that was the, the chemistry and dynamic between Chris Pratt and um, Thor. I can't believe I I forgot his name. Chris Um, Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Thank you. Was electric. And I, that was the one thing I was looking forward to most in the next upcoming franchise of like quarter four of Marvel. That was that dynamic is what I was looking forward to most. I'm so thrilled that they're actually confirmed going through with it. Cause I love to see that back and forth between them. Between like being, he was trying to be the alpha, but he's Thor. Thor's the man. It's just, it's fantastic. But is fat, is fat slob Thor still the alpha if he's drunk all the time? Like, does he, ha- are we going to get a montage of him like jump roping and, and running on a treadmill? Mark, you're the fitness guy. Maybe. I mean, he's, he's probably put on some weight. He always does whenever he's not in that, that Marvel role. Um, yeah, this yeah this is I guess true. He's part of that like hit hills something huge church like they always do in Texas. I don't know where he's from, um, but supposedly yeah. I don't know if the pastor or whoever came out is like saying like he was against gay marriage or something. And then since he went to the church, people are trying to cancel Chris Pratt. Which I mean I I don't know. He's come out. And defended himself and actually people like Mark Ruffalo, if you got Mark Ruffalo, who is very liberal and takes a huge, I mean, democratic stance on, you know, everything going on and he's defending Chris Pratt. I think people are just getting a little bit carried away with this whole, like, yo, you got, you got to defend yourself right now or we're going to cancel your ass. Like, I mean, I'm not the guy that's going to come out and be like, uh, you know, cancel everybody, but also, there are certain things that are worth being canceled over. Like if you're overtly racist or something that comes up, then yeah. Uh, the anti-gay thing, I don't know anything about that. That's not a good look. Certainly I wouldn't support that. Um, but and I think I, he's not insane. He, he doesn't support it at all. If that is the case. I mean, he's a fucking really nice guy from what it looks like in the public, you know? And I think a lot of celebrities that are coming out and may not have his, political same political views based on where he grew up you know and based on just being hollywood actors i mean the majority of them are liberals 
So if they're defending him, you would think like, okay, maybe people are getting a little bit carried away with this whole cancel shit. It. it also does, it's getting harder and harder to separate art from artist where, you know, you used to be able to look at somebody and say, well, I disagree with you, but you're a really good actor. Like Tom Cruise, I think is the pinnacle of that. Obviously, none of us are Scientologists. None of us are crazy people, but we like Tom Cruise movies, right? Yeah. Sometimes a guy has to be a fucking weirdo or have stupid opinions. I mean, Tom Cruise is the guy that came out and said, nobody needs therapy. You just need to be happy all the time or something. I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was very stupid. Uh, He's an actor. You don't have to agree with him. Just he has to be good at acting. Yeah. And you just can't be overly shitty. Like, let's let's say Jeff Johns. Like, he's done shitty things, said shitty things. Like, I don't support his work anymore. Just because yeah. he's a shitty ass dude. I'm not separating his art from the artist because I know how shitty of a dude he's. I mean, people have been coming out and saying he is. So, I mean, like, I still buy all of his comics and stuff. I but. still fucking love the Flash runs, though. I just love it. <laughs> I, I, I get what you're saying. I just. Let's move on. We, we don't have to talk politics. Let's fuck that. Yeah. I've heard enough of that shit lately. Bad news, though. WandaVision has now been delayed until January 15th, 2021. Uh, This is probably smart on Disney's part. We've got five episodes of Mandalorian left, which will put us squarely in the middle of December. Then they're going to release Pixar's Soul. And then a couple weeks later, they'll start dropping WandaVision. I have a confession to make. I actually put in the request for them to delay WandaVision until my birthday and then they just put it on january 15th so that was my fault 100 percent. i take full credit for that um it was just a walt disney request you know i just called walt my guy did a little seance ciao disney's frozen head no I, yeah did a seance it was he's still alive because he's frozen so then we just had a little connection you know like that emp epm what's it called emp i was uh, there the first time sp are you talking about like Psychic communication, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. ESP. Sure, okay. Once you're, once you're frozen and then you go to a ghost because ghosts are real, obviously. Mark knows that. Um, mm-hmm. You can yeah. have ESPN. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, ESPN. Mm-hmm. It's there's a seventy percent percent. Yeah, there's a seventy percent chance that's already raining. I might have had a few beers. The only time I see ESPN is when I'm talking to ghosts because ESPN sucks. Nobody listens to watches ESPN anymore. Peace. All right. Fair enough. Well, it wouldn't be an episode of the Chumpcast if I didn't have Dwayne The Rock Johnson news. So I do. Uh, He and Universal have hired Jonathan Herman, who directed Straight Outta Compton. I'm sorry, wrote Straight Outta Compton to write a reboot of The Scorpion King, which this is our second Scorpion King reference of the episode. And I feel like that deserves to place us at the top of the iTunes charts. New record. Damn. Bribe five star review, please. Uh, Anyways. It is unfortunate that The Rock is not going to star in this. Uh, Deadline reports that the studio will look into uh, look to tap a new actor to play the action hero, as well as a new director to steer this. As long as they can bring back Brendan Fraser, I'm fine with this. Who is your new Scorpion King, though? Who's an up-and-coming jacked dude? Um... Who's the wrestler Reigns that everyone hates? That's like Roman the Reigns. Roman Reigns. That's his next. That's his like step into the movies. Isn't that what The Rock did? He was already was that, in the movies. He was in Hobbs and Shaw with The Rock, actually. Before Scorpion King? No. Oh, never mind. I should saying. I'm talking about The Rock. I'm talking about The Rock. I'm high and drunk as fuck. Peace. <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, Darian says that he wants to be the next Scorpion King. I'm. I'm good with that. Getting big enough. Damn. All right. There we go. The Scorpion King has to be overly CGI no matter what. It doesn't matter if they're jacked. They're just going to CGI over their muscles. But I would like to see like John Cena as a Scorpion King if we can't have The Rock again. John Cena is too old for that. You got to get a young buck in there. Fine. Um, Can you imagine the Scorpion King coming out in jorts? That would be amazing. It would be kind of amazing, but you wouldn't be able to take him seriously. How would you even see him? 
<laughs> Sorry, worst joke of all time, please. Uh, we the best. Worst, worst, worst. The worst. She's the worst person in the world. Huge skank, terrible. But thank you. I'll start. So, worst so. bird. Uh, I'll say worst man alive. Me currently because I'm blacked out and actually high as fuck. Best person alive. Past me. I accidentally. I got a call on like a Thursday, and was just like. Hi, sir. Would you like a box of wine? I was like, yeah, is it uh, is it free? They're like, yeah, you've been paying $40 a month for this wine subscription. You've gone so long with hugging wine. Here's some wine, dude. And I was like, sick. All right, thanks. I guess I'll take 13 bottles of wine. Cancel my subscription. Thank you. Peace. So now current me is blacked out on that wine. Wait, I don't understand I what just happened. Taking money out of your account every month. Because I'm an idiot, and I'm just like, there's money? What's money? <laughs> They'll figure it out. And they were not sending you wine, but they were taking money out of your account? No, I was supposed to order it. because it's Oh, in it just was immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yo, you need a lot of wine for how much you pay. And I was like, sick, send it to me and cancel, peace. Yeah, you would... You would you would think uh you would maybe just like order it slowly or gradually instead you just order it all at once i mean are you gonna send some out for christmas or i think i came for the holiday season i'm gonna save a couple for thanksgiving <laughs> maybe send a couple for for christmas who knows there's a, that's a lot of wine i did just polish off a full bottle no questions easily my roommate came home with a bottle with six of the giant sutter home bottles a day oh, before God. <sighs> He didn't oh. even know it was yeah jb he's like they're six for six dollars i was like let's have dude. a glass of wine dude <laughs> it was fantastic the the best part about my first job after college which was a personal banker at chase in the grocery stores if people remember those i don't think they exist anymore they took all those banks no, out yeah do they okay well that was my first job and at those banks opened a little bit later so it was like 10 in the morning I remember just the people that would come in and grab the little Sutter home bottles and just get smashed by noon. Just like, yeah. Yo, Sutter home will get you, dude. I've had a lot of Sutter home tonight. That was before I even got Ooh. tapped into the nice fine Italian wines. Mama Maya. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's all I don't know who you just offended, but there are a lot of them. And okay. It's, it's an endearing Mama Mia, obviously. I, Darian says there's still TCF banks and jewels, and that's exactly I what I was going to say. It's TCF or PCM or whatever. Uh, I have a worst man alive and a best elephant alive. Mark, I know you've got a soft spot for elephants. Um, so in Johannesburg in South Africa, uh, a big game hunter. What is that? What are you showing right now? Are those just... Are the, Is that the... Uh, Speak no evil, see no evil, hear no evil. My fancy fonts. Oh, yeah. Your fancy fonts. Okay. Uh, anyways, this guy was what a big game hunter. His name was Theunis Botha. Uh, both of these nuts, I think. Uh, he mm. died last Friday on a hunt in Zimbabwe when a herd of elephants charged at him. Uh, so Good. he shot an elephant and it fell on him and killed him. Good. Did the elephant die? Unfortunately, it did. Uh, uh, the sad part of the story. I have long said I have no issue with big game hunting, but you shouldn't be able to do it with a gun. If you want to go kill an elephant, here's a six inch knife. Go kill an elephant. If you can pull that off, you can fucking have it. But hunting like lions and, and elephants and shit like that with a with a fucking big old rifle it's it's cowardly. It's stupid. Why are why are we allowing this to happen? It's so fucking dumb. Why is a knife different than a, a gun? Why not fist fight it? I think you should have to fist fight it. I think you're a little too aggressive, Smithers. I mean, I'm trying to give the human a fighting chance, even though the elephant would definitely still kill him. You mm -hmm. could you could not stab through an elephant's skin with a knife. I there's no way to prove I mean, I don't want to. From a guy that has actually that had an elephant. Don't want to touch the, don't want to do it. Have you? Yeah, I'm best friends with a bunch of elephants in Thailand. 
still write them postcards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sounds they have right. really thick skin, though. Yes, they do, which is why I don't think that a knife would be able to pierce it, mm-hmm. and you definitely shouldn't be able to shoot them. That's fucking terrible. Yeah. Boo. Fuck that guy. I, I read also have a recently that said that uh, elephants look at us like the, the way that we look at puppies, where they think that we're just cute. Well, that's just fantastic. I love elephants. Yeah, except this is heartbreaking. This story is heartbreaking now. <laughs> All right. I'm going to shut up before I start crying. Mark, who's your best man alive? You want to know what the cutest thing is? When you're holding a watermelon and the elephant just picks it up with its trunk and just plops it in its mouth and just swallows it and shits Whoop. it out literally 30 minutes later. Like the whole those. thing like swallows a watermelon whole? Literally, they no, they actually crush it like over their mouth and just like scoop it into their mouth. It's very That's cute. terrifying, dude. An elephant could just crush you like that. Dude, they could. They're like dogs, though. They're very friendly. That, that's because they think we're cute. Yeah. I know I'm sad again. Can you give me a best man alive, please? Uh, no, this is going to be an even. This is going to revert from sad to angry because I'm going to talk a little bit about Tony La Russa. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get some more sh- wine. I apologize for leaving. A and shitty you know, ass manager. You know manager of one of the worst baseball cities moving over to the White Sox. Good. Fucking manage the White Sox. Who cares? But if you don't know who Tony La Russa was, mainly, I mean, he's been the manager for the St. Louis Cardinals for a long time. And uh, the White Sox just picked him up as their manager. But he was arrested for a DUI, what, a week or two ago, Smithers? And that was his second one, I believe. Uh, let me let me clarify a few parts of your story. Uh, he hasn't managed since 2011. He was the Cardinals manager. He was man- He was in a front office role in uh, for the Angels in Anaheim Mm. the DUI happened he got pulled over I'm sorry he didn't get pulled over he was driving while drunk and swerved so hard into a curb that he basically broke his vehicle popped the tire the vehicle was smoking sitting on the side of the road couldn't drive anymore this was in February in I want to say it was in Arizona. Arizona Phoenix, yeah. Either Arizona or Jupiter, Florida. Phoenix. The thing is, he's gotten DUIs in both of those places now for spring training, so I don't remember which one it is. Uh, the the Jupiter of Florida was in 07. That was his first DUI. The one that just happened was in Phoenix. Um, and I honestly, the worst part about it, it was his response to the officer. He said, I'm a Hall of Famer baseball person. I'm legit. I'm a Hall of Famer brother. Like fucking Hulk Hogan. Who says that shit? Hulk Hogan does. Yeah, he's he he's terrible. Uh, Brother. He's 76 years old, and they're hiring him to manage this very young team. And he has come out against people who like protest during the anthem and shit like that. I don't understand how the White Sox. Well, it was the ownership. I, I think Jerry Reinsdorf is the worst owner in baseball at this point because... The Mets just got a new owner. <laughs> and uh, basketball. Yeah, no, he probably isn't the worst owner in basketball just because he can ride Michael Jordan forever. Um, he at least has he Michael Jordan. No, he didn't. But sure. Yeah, he didn't. I, Mark, I completely hijacked your story. Uh, fuck this guy. He sucks. That was the story. I mean, getting a DUI is bad. You should never be fucking drinking and driving. There's no point. Call fucking Uber, dude. Especially if you're making that much money, you piece of shit. Yeah, you're a Hall of Famer baseball dude. Well, you, you got the money to ca- call a fucking Uber. You or could call have, your brother. You could afford to have somebody on staff 24 7 that's just your driver. And now you're getting paid a couple million dollars more by the White Sox. I just, this whole thing is so shitty. I'm not a White Sox fan. I don't hate the White Sox openly, but this is the worst possible thing that could have happened to that franchise. They were mm-hmm. on the cusp of being relevant and being very good. And I, I just think this is a distraction that doesn't, they don't need. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got one more, and this is just kind of like an oddity story. So tell me who's in the wrong here. Uh, a group of three guys were camping in Yellowstone and they decided they were going to try to cook a whole chicken in a hot spring slash geyser which apparently is illegal 
And I don't understand quite why it's illegal. It seems like this is free energy, like geothermal energy that we should be taking advantage of. Mm -hmm. Uh, But but they've all been arrested and apparently put on probation for the next 17 months. They were out camping and they just decided they were going to drop like a, a an uncooked chicken into this geyser and see what happened. Like it's a boiling hot geyser. It should cook that yeah. chicken, right? Yeah. It's going to kill all bacteria. I don't, I don't see an issue with it. It's not like you're doing anything to stop the natural process. The geyser is going to st- keep being a geyser, keep heating up the water. And also like, doesn't it emit a bunch of like methane and do you want that shit all over your chicken? Probably not. I mean, I didn't say they were geniuses, but I, I don't really see, I, I guess, Technically, it's like dangerous to be around a geyser because it's really hot and you could fall in or like the gases could knock you unconscious or something like that. I don't know. It's apparently illegal to be that close to a geyser, which makes this an issue. I still think it's uh, it's very they, they showed ingenuity. You know, maybe they couldn't get a fire started or something like that. And they were just like, fuck it. Let's just take it to the geyser and toss it in. Maybe that's where we'll cook our Thanksgiving turkey this year, Mark. Let's boil it disgusting Ugh. uh yeah I, so who's who's in the wrong there is it the park ranger or is it these guys so i think we're a little confused <clears throat> as as a guy that's been to iceland and hiked through the mountains in iceland there are geysers that are like actually like blowing steam and if you get blown in your face you fucking burn your face off but there's also hot springs which are geysers that aren't necessarily like they're just kind of like bubbling the hot steam into the water so you can go in the steam into the stream and like people go in there and it's like a natural hot tub basically so i don't know if they like went into the natural spring where the water's hot and warm and they thought maybe the the chicken could cook in there which is really disgusting or if they were like holding the chicken on a stick over like an actual geyser that's like spewing fucking hot steam i don't know all right here's here's the details they set uh they were in the Shoshone Geyser Basin's geothermal hot springs and dropped two whole chickens, each of which they'd brined for a few days. I love this, so they were prepared. Uh and double bagged in burlap sacks and roasting bags in an effort to not spread contamination. I think this is fine. I, I don't really see a problem with it. Even if it was just like the chicken without a bag over it. It's going to kill any bacteria if you put it in water at if it's over a hundred and whatever degrees. 165, I think. I, I yeah, know. I don't it's know. Probably very stupid. You should probably just try and cook it like over a fire. But for the purposes of this dumb podcast, we'll say it's fine. Uh, well, according to fucking Zach Efron, if you watched uh, that one show on Netflix where he's basically saying uh, everyone has to start using geothermic mickle energy or whatever it's called yes it's geothermal. this is the way to go this is the way to go geothermal energy wind energy yeah that's the way to go it's not wrong but how like how do we do it in the u.s because that sounds great but like we don't have the geysers that iceland has that's what i always thought like okay you have a great idea but that's just not part of america we don't have all the shit iceland has naturally here and solve all all of the world's energy problems right now i gotta just call zach efron if me and zach efron put our heads together we would be as smart as just a normal dude probably and we could figure it out how many times in that conversation between you and zach efron do you think that the word dude 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 we would we would drop it a couple times quite a few dude i think you might be right dude Geothermical. Geothermical, yes. Post apocalyptic linguistic. Geothermical. Linguini. All right. If you heard that sound, you know that it's time for our weekly movie review. And this week, we got a real fucking humdinger. Iceland. <laughs> no, it's Greenland. It's Iceland. No, it's fine. Did you know that it was named the reverse? Iceland and Greenland. I'm going to kick him out just for a second while he talks because I was I was honestly waiting for on the episode where he would say that Greenland is actually ice and Iceland is actually green. Iceland is very nice. 
You good now, Brick? Beautiful. Would you you want to say, Brick? Okay. I just explained it all. It was perfect. I heard. I didn't. I didn't go anywhere, did I? I was. You you heard every word that I said. Obviously. You heard heard everything that you said. Okay. Obviously. That's our week. Is Greenland? There we go. Um, Currently at one hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which means that you know that no critics have seen this fucking movie. Uh, Sixty-three percent from one hundred and twenty-six fans. I wanted to get a more representative sample size. I went to IMDb with about 8,500 reviews. This is at a 6.4 out of 10. I think that's probably about right. It's extremely accurate. Okay. So <clears throat> let me try and explain this movie. FX Butler. as the movies. That's all you have to say. This is 100% going to be an FX in like three weeks. Uh, Jerry Butler is a structural engineer. He builds very tall buildings and an asteroid. I'm sorry, a comet or an asteroid. I don't know. They, they differentiate between the two and I don't remember which is coming towards earth and it's going to kill everybody. This is the story of how a family of three fucks up everything and does everything wrong in the middle of the end of the world. Is that fair? Mm-hmm. Yes. Very fair. So Jerry Butler is like among the 1% who is chosen by a governmental decree that basically says like, hey, your family can come to this bunker that we're hiding in Greenland, which, by the way, they tried to make it a secret in this movie as to where the bunkers were. But also the name of the movie is Greenland. Yeah, the people in the movie don't know that the movie is named Greenland. Duh, what's the difference? We do. They're not trying to hide it from the people in the movie. They're trying to hide it from the people who don't fucking... Uh, anyways. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned, this is starring Gerard Butler. Uh, you've got Marina Bakarin in there. She's beautiful. I think is excellent normally, but in this case, she was a very annoying character who I hated very much. Probably true of everyone in this movie. Um Rick, you look uh, incredulous. Did you not hate her? I didn't hate her. She re- reacted reasonably to the situation at hand, I felt. But either way, this movie, the, nothing discerns itself from any other movie of this genre that really stood out. You know, it was like the most generic 2012 meets San Andreas with Gerard Butler when he saves the president style of movie. FX has the movies. That's all I is that not that that's the movie. That's that's it. You saw it already. I explained it to you. Pretty much, yeah. And uh I will say that they spent up for their two leads in Jerry Butler and Marina Bakarin. The CGI was good. It's pretty much a no name actor. So uh you get a couple like, oh hey, I recognize that actor. You'll, you'll get that throughout the movie, but uh, they did not spend up on the cast for this because, as you mentioned, Brick, they did spend money on the CG. It looked good, Mark. It looked good, but there wasn't a ton of it. A, for a... Is that a Budweiser? It is no. a Crush Apricot Sour. What the fuck is that? Uh, Ten Barrel Brewing Company. Shout out to Ten Barrel. Best sours in the game. Oh, it's, it's, just a Col- it's a Colorado brewery that does sours. Yeah. They're great. Your stomach oh, is so man. acidic right now. It's at a pH of fucking 12, probably. You know it. Super science guy. No scientific on you. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Mark, what were your thoughts on this movie? I mean, I didn't mind G butts that much. He's G butts. He, he does good in these kind of movies where like somebody takes his family or kills his family or he can't find his family. So he stayed in his G butts lane. Um, the CGI was was good. It was definitely made for a theater, this movie. They wanted it to be released in a theater, and unfortunately, it didn't get that, I don't think, unless they did. But nobody's going to see it in, in theater. some places, but not in America. Not in Chicago, because everyone's getting COVID. Um, but yeah, I uh, didn't think it was that great. Fair enough. Brick, uh, do you disagree? No, I literally said FX has the movie. It was fine. I mean, that, okay. that is not a that is a not a knock on a movie. By the way, there are some great movies on FX. Exactly, it's it's that movie. It's you'll see it on FX whenever you see it on FX. What's Jared Gerard Butler's G butts G butts? What's what's your favorite movie with G butts? 
law abiding citizen. Law abiding yeah. citizen. Did you guys say that at the same time? Wow. What do you guys twins or something? What do you guys or both Geo dads? Storm. Ge- <laughs> Geostorm. Geostorm. All I forgot time. Geostorm existed. Wow, this this is basically Geostorm, isn't it? There's either a storm, his family gets taken, or both, or there's yeah. He this just was an trivia on this movie. Oh, yeah. If you guys are interested, yeah, let's hear it. Uh, did you know that Chris Evans was originally cast to play G Butt's role and Neil Blomkamp was signed on to direct? What happened to that? Uh, I don't know, but uh, Neil Blomkamp announced in February of 2019 that he would no longer be doing it. Rick Roman Wah, who's the guy who actually directed this, hopped on, and then Chris Evans said, Peace. Wow. Did you know Chris I, Evans? I, got, I, I, I do have a little bit of trivia here too. Um, this is actually the sequel to Geostorm, and they got the director from 2012. You are yeah. making that up, but that's okay. <laughs> nope, uh, 300 was his best movie, or Beowulf and Grundle. Beowulf, Beowulf and Grundle. <laughs> Be- Beowulf and Grundle, not Grundle. I apologize. The Grundle, yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, I I said the word grundle to my wife not that my wife not that long ago mm-hmm. and she goes isn't that something people wore in the 1800s to suck in their gut and i was like oh you mean a girdle yeah and no. laughed hysterically for like five minutes can we just can where we just spoil it real quick? <laughs> <laughs> i've been meaning to get tucked into the dress where's my grundle <laughs> I want to say there's nothing you can possibly spoil about this because you okay. know that everybody's going to survive. Yeah. Uh, they make it readily apparent, which is also one of the downfalls of this movie. Yeah, um, they did not. What? They didn't up the stakes. I thought at least G bots was going to die because he, he, you learn I, that he, I, he did some fucked up shit and uh, his, uh, he's not on good terms with his wife. So I thought he was going to make the ultimate sacrifice at the end, but at the end they were just like, no, we'll we'll put you on the plane too. Come on. Yeah. They were well, about me like endless time after time being bailed out for no fucking reason. You don't get an in, you don't get any insight in the first place as to why he was on the president presidential list of like one percent of the population. Like what what's so special about this fucking guy? G bot, dude. Uh, there's no explanation needed. Mm, okay, sure. Uh I okay, Mark. Would you have been on the presidential list? Oh, of course. For what? Um, for being my plus one because I'm on the presidential list. Obviously, the jokester, the lighthearted guy that just goes around smashing sandwiches. Yeah, I Bring think that <laughs> sandwich smasher on here. You know, you know, who we need more of guys who are going to punch sandwiches when I'm not looking. <laughs> I can't wait for that. We just need more dickheads. I think that Brick, they would have, they would have selected you and sent you to the middle of nowhere, so that you didn't interfere with anything else. They wouldn't have told you that. Obviously, they would have been like, "Go to Area Fifty One in New Mexico, I know wait for further instructions, and then they just bomb the place." No, because I would survive it. Plus, they wouldn't put me there. They put you there because I'd be like teleportation, ESPN, Smithers, transportation, my body into yours. You're dead. I'm that high and drunk right now. I am that high and drunk right now. Please, please okay, excuse me. Do you, uh, do you, think- you think Bud Light and Minute Maid and Dodge Ram paid for the product placement in this fucking movie? I didn't know about Minute Maid. Where was Minute Maid? Oh, it's, a favorite, it's a kid's favorite juice, the <laughs> diabetic kid. Which, by the way, again, this is another movie where kids just ruin everything. <sighs> What if what if the I'm mom was mistakenly giving him Minute Maid light, just like less sugar? Isn't that the good thing to do? No, don't you want sugar for his insulin? I think like I spike insulin. different diabetes. types of diabetes. I think yeah, he, he has low blood sugar. sugar. Needs <clears throat> not less sugar. Well, if you were selected, Mark, would you, in a crowd of people, be screaming out? I've been selected. I've been selected. While holding <laughs> Look up, at um, me. I would. A, in a rowdy grew up, uh, crowd of people who are obviously trying to get into a military base. Yeah. Did you mention that in the synopsis with the whole like premises? How how G butts get selected and it's only like a very small percentage of, of the population yeah. to go I, in this bunker? 
several times now. Do okay. you even listen to this podcast while we're doing it? Did you Good mention point, it's Mark. the bunkers in Greenland? Inside oh, Greenland. You guys know what we should do? We should make a movie bet, and the loser has to watch Cyst. No. Okay. no bad idea. Bad, dumb, dumb. Are, are we going to talk about David Denman being in this? Roy from The Office just David always Denman. gets the, sh oh. the shitty-ass roles. Just is a dick and everything. He sucks in this movie. He sucks. He's like, let me take your kid. He's the equivalent of the... He's the equivalent of the guy who dresses a lady to try and get on the survivor boats of the Titanic. That's that oh, guy. Wow. Dark. Then, okay. That's not the equivalent. This is my fake child. This is definitely my child. Come here. Oh, he's got a lure spin, but I lost mine. Oh, save me. I think that my least favorite part of this movie was that they were trying so hard to get to Lexington, Kentucky. No one in the history of anything has ever been in a hurry to get to Lexington, Kentucky. Can we, um, I want to talk about one thing. I want to ask you guys, who, who is the one hero in this movie? The one hero, huh? The one hero. If you had to pick a hero in this movie, who would have been? Roy. <laughs> I don't think there are any heroes in this movie. The, uh, the guy that took Morena back Ren's kid. Oh, Roy. Yeah, that's Roy. Yeah, he's the hero. He's the I got to give it to whoever was driving that pace bus at the end, just still doing their job. It was she <laughs> when Allison got dropped off on a bus. Like there's the oh, there's a person that's still waking up to drive a pace bus and make sure everyone gets to their stop. That's the real hero in this movie. So. Brick, what kind of person would you be in this scenario? Because you get a, a couple different glimpses. You get the people who are just like partying because it's the end of the world. You get the people who are looting and murdering people in a CVS for some reason. Mm -hmm. And then you get the people who are doing everything that they can to get to Greenland to try to survive. So which one are you? I'm obviously Roy, the guy who steals someone else's child and says... <laughs> Get me on the safe boat. I need to go on the safe boat. <laughs> Brick is the guy in the bunker. He's the last guy. And they're like, Brick, hit the button to close the door. And he's just like, okay. And then he's like, and he just walks away. <laughs> he just like keeps walking, forgetting about it. Cool. Cool. Everyone cool. dies. Like, Hang on. Yeah. Everyone dies. Away. Mark, which type are you? Um. I'm probably I'm probably the guy at the end that was just screaming at G butts. He's like, all right, he'll he'll give us a call. He'll call us back. The one neighbor that was trying to fucking get, get the details on what's going thing. on. Yeah. I think yeah. Something's yeah. Going on because you're unimportant, you piece of shit. Uh, I, think, I think something might be going wrong with the government. You should well, let me know when you get a chance. All right. G yeah. yeah. All right. Sure thing, bud. <laughs> Ultimate dad move right there. Yeah. Just like get out of here i did not really enjoy either when uh scott glenn showed up who is stick in the daredevil tv show and he's uh kevin garney garvey senior in the leftovers if you saw him you'd know him he's not really like a, a household mm -hmm. name but he has an all-time terrible line he's like this farmer in kentucky and he just like looks into the camera and says i don't fold when things get rough and i just closed my eyes and I rolled my eyes so hard that I saw the front of my brain and it was terrible. Yeah. There were, there were a couple bad ones in this. Is there anything else we need to say about this? This was a bad movie, right? I'm going to say, save it. I'm going to give it a, save it. Rick, what are you going to give it? Mark? I think you're absolutely right. Let's save it for later. Maybe you put it on the background when you're playing a sieve or something. Who knows? Maybe you watch it all the way through like a real person. Who knows? It could be fine. Save it for when you want to watch it. <laughs> I'm the man. <laughs> well, I don't ever want to watch it, so I'm going to say skip it. All right. All right. Wow. See ya, dude. Well, go, go watch the the clit. What is it called again? The Did you say clit? No, it's called the cyst, you idiot. <laughs> you realize that all of this is recorded, right? Yeah, I know what you said and what I said, you dumb idiot. Okay. I guess FX doesn't have the movies for, for Smithers. <laughs> Let's go ahead with the recommendations for the week. Mm -hmm. What do you got for me? 
before I'm gonna have to get get back into the fucking show. There's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff going on in video games right now. We got Miles Morales, Spider Man. I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty, uh, Cold War. Just dropped what like two days ago, a day ago. So uh, I recommend that if you're into first person shooters. I prefer Warm Wars. Warm Wars. What are you even talking about? Brick, what's your recommendation for the week? My recommendation is clear and concise and, and just as, as clear as can possibly be. I, don't, I, I have nothing. no idea what nothing. you're saying. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I have absolutely nothing. What what kind of recommendation can I have? Hey, I, Smithers, and I think I found, why? I, I found the culprit Take of the banging. It's, it's this guy down here. Right here. That guy. Should we just kick him out? Naked no, wines. I'm just saying. He's it's been banging his table. I hear it. Because their wine is fantastic. It'll also get you drunk if you have enough of it. Um, naked wines. They'll charge you $40, and then they'll let you know that you're getting charged $40 a month, and then they'll send you a bunch of wine. 12 months you. later, they'll let you know. <laughs> they'll let you know, sir, we've taken enough of your money. Can you please at least take some of our wine? Jesus Christ. Yeah, I will, and it's fantastic. Naked wines, that's my recommendation. Absolutely concise as can be. Let's just fucking end this. My recommendation is Miles Morales. I've already talked about it. We should once again mention our Cyberpunk 2077 giveaway, assuming that that game eventually comes out someday. Uh, We are giving it away. Uh, You can check out our Instagram page for more information. Basically, we gave out three code words in our last three episodes. If you DM us that three-word code phrase, you are entered into the contest. If you share our post on Instagram and hashtag cyber chumps, you get a second entry. So that is a free copy of cyberpunk 2077 on the platform of your choice, whether it's PlayStation, Xbox, or PC, check that out. Send us a message. You'll be entered. You win some and you win some. Let's go. Yes. So with that said, I'm going to end this before brick says something even stupider somehow. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I want to give away. I want to give away something. If you're going to give away something, I want to give away something. Can I give away this poster? I don't don't want this poster. Is it is it the top one hundred movies poster? No, don't. It's this. It's this fucking this poster with all the faces. I don't. I don't want it anymore. But it's Deadpool in there. It's a superhero. It's a Marvel like faces poster. I don't want it. Someone could take it. Uh, Code word is uh, wines. Sweet bear wine is the code word, and you get this fucking poster for free. <laughs> I don't even know what to say at this point. Uh, follow us on all social media platforms at the Chomp Cast. You can call or text us at 847 920 6107. Everybody, make sure you call or text Brick at about 6 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, he's going to be feeling great. And I am looking forward to him basically just not paying attention. Thank God we didn't try to record tomorrow morning. He would have been a fucking wreck. Oh, my God. He would have been dead guy. Here, if you're going to text me, here's my number. 815-651-6672. So text me all the things. I don't. I don't know whose number that was. <laughs> that I just love how he cut off. Oh, it's just fucking. <laughs> that is uh, that is very stupid. Okay, so uh, until next time, uh, check out check out all of our amazing Patreon subscribers. Pow to roll it, but chumps out, motherfuckers. Sign up on Patreon. Peace. Ciao, man. Peace. <laughs>